Item number SCP-1257 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All copies of SCP-1257, encompassing all instances of SCP-1257-1, SCP-1257-2, and SCP-1257-3, are to be kept in a secure media vault at site. Any uncontained copies of SCP-1257 are to be recovered or destroyed by Mobile Task Force Move-53, Ebert's Thumb. Because of the nature of the original appearance of SCP-1257 and its widespread exposure to the public, Mobile Task Force Move-53 is also tasked to replace any new sources of information about SCP-1257 as they are discovered, in whatever format they may appear in, in accordance with Protocol Gamma 1257-A, code name Snopes Revenge. Footnote 1. Information about SCP-1257 is replaced with new information leading to the conclusion that SCP-1257 never existed and is a hoax. Protocol Gamma 1257-A also requires all original documentation discovered about SCP-1257 be replaced with forged copies of many references to SCP-1257. Unauthorized persons exposed to copies of SCP-1257, or who evidence any knowledge about SCP-1257, shall be interrogated by the Foundation Intelligence Department, administered Class A amnesiacs, and have implanted post-hypnotic suggestions to reinforce the belief that SCP-1257 is a hoax. Footnote 2 As of May 27, 19 all original participants in the production of SCP-1257 have been found and either treated with amnesiacs or terminated. Study of SCP-1257 is limited to personnel at level 3 or higher, subject to approval by the Foundation Intelligence Department. Description: SCP-1257 is an American-produced half-hour situation comedy, originally titled Raisin' Danny, that aired on the television network for six episodes in 1970. Instances of SCP-1257-1 are the original production reels for all twelve episodes filmed, recovered from the Archives in 1980. Instances of SCP-1257-2 are the draft and shooting scripts and copies, including four episodes that were never shot. Instances of SCP-1257-3 are all other video recordings of the six episodes actually aired. The anomalous properties of SCP-1257 manifest in any and all video copies produced from the original series, and in any copy of the scripts for those episodes. Every year, beginning in mid-September, video recordings and scripts for Raisin' Danny will change to reflect a new season of episodes. Replacements will begin with Episode 1, and progress sequentially through each episode in order during each subsequent week. While the Foundation has access to the first 16 episodes of each season, it appears that each SCP-1257 season runs approximately 24 episodes. Footnote 3 12 via video copies, SCP-1257-1, and 4 only via unproduced scripts, SCP-1257-2. Additionally, while new seasons of SCP-1257 occasionally produce hour-long specials, copies are always limited to the first half-hour running time of the original episodes of SCP-1257. Video copies of the original over-the-air broadcast of the first six episodes of SCP-1257 present a special case. Commercials recorded contemporaneously with SCP-1257 will also show changes consistent with the content of SCP-1257, and updated videos have occasionally shown news bulletins and weather alerts that imply multiple points of divergence between the world that continues to produce SCP-1257 and our own. SCP-1257's original premise had a black man named Tyler, played by Whitman Mayo, married to a white woman who already had a son by a prior marriage. When the woman dies prior to the pilot episode, the man is left raising her son, named Danny, played by Danny Bonaduce, as his own. Reviews of the original series recovered by the Foundation were universally unfavorable and referred to it as the unwanted bastard child of Sanford and Son and the courtship of Eddie's father. Because of the anomalous properties of SCP-1257, the Foundation has only been able to reconstruct the general outline of the original content of the series. Addendum 1 Notes on selected episodes of SCP-1257 observed in Foundation custody. Document S-1257-11 Season 3, Episode 3, Tyler's Date Episode manifests three months after initial containment. One line in the script implies the assassination of American President Jimmy Carter in late 1978 or early 1979. Season 4, Episode 1, Bad Touch Part 2 Second half of a special episode ending Season 3, Eric, a young classmate of Danny's, is the target of a sexual predator using what appears to be anomalous items manufactured by Dr. One Entertainment to lure his victims. Season 5 Episode 10, The Senior Trip, 
episode mentions a scandal where ten members of the UK House of Commons have been publicly revealed as members of a cult that bears a strong resemblance to the Church of the Broken God. Season 6 Episode 1 The Freshman The title of SCP-1257 is changed to Danny. The premise of the series changes as well, dropping the Tyler character and sending Danny to college in New York City with five of his classmates from high school. Footnote 4 Including Eric, despite a three-year age difference. The university labs appear to have specimens of SCP, SCP, and SCP. Season 6, Episode 11, The plot of the episode concerns Eric's suspicions that one of their doormates might be secretly one of the This turns out to be a misunderstanding. From context, the appear to prey on young women and have become endemic in and seem to be a result of a containment breach of in Mexico City. Season 7, Episode 2 Eric's Midterm Caper When this episode manifested in SCP-1257-3-12, a new advertisement appeared during the second break for Marshall, Carter, and Dark. The ad promoted services for Season 10, Episode 1, The Job Hunt, hour-long special introducing another change in premise. Footnote 5 Danny has graduated college, is unemployed, and advertisements shown during SCP-1257-3 instances show that the Eric character has been spun off into his own series. One scene implies that the Global Occult Coalition has become public enough to run one ads in the local newspaper. Season 10, Episode 2, The New Guy. The show's title is officially changed to Agent Danny of the SCP. Footnote 6 It is clear from the script that the title the writers intended is actually Agent Danny of the SCP Foundation. However, in the title card and tape dialogue, Foundation is consistently omitted. The name does appear correctly in the background sets intended to represent Foundation locations. Danny has been employed as Level 1 security at Site-19, and through a series of mishaps prevents a containment breach at SCP-173. Season 10, Episode 5, D-Class Act Danny mishears a co-worker's conversation and becomes convinced that he has been mistakenly reassigned to D-Class by the HR department. Season 10, Episode 11, Leaping Lizards 682 Note, Details of SCP-1257 episodes past Season 10 are only available with the approval of the Intelligence Department.